What's going on guys? Welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. So in today's video, I had a customer send in what I'm gonna call a basket case set of carburetors. We know we're missing some parts. We're not sure the condition of the parts that are here. So we're gonna see what we have to work with and see if we can't bring these things back to life. So I haven't even opened these things up yet. So let's see what we're working with. These should be off of, I don't remember the exact year, early 70s, uh, CB400F. So that's the four cylinder model which means they're basically just the mini version of the CB500 and 550 carbs I rebuild all the time. So let's do a visual inspection and start to see what we can identify that are parts uh, that we're missing. Then I can go through my stockpile, see what all I have, see if there's anything we have to order, or if I'm gonna be able to uh, kind of find all those parts and pieces. So we'll just start from the top here. We have three top caps, so we are definitely missing one top cap. So like all our slides are there, all our adjusters, all that's good. Throttle or turn spring, those are often missing, but those are there. Choke, all that seems fine. I don't care about our mixture screws because those come in the rebuild kits anyway. All our choke components seem to be there. Okay, not too bad so far. So now we can look underneath here. Starting from the obvious, we are missing one bowl. So let's figure out which bowl that is. So there's basically just two different kinds. So you see how these both have, the point is here and then the drain is on the same side. This, the point, and then the drain's on the, on the uh, other side. So the drain screw always points to the outside of the bike. So carbs three and four share a bowl and then carbs one and two share. So we are missing a number one or number two bowl. Okay. We have a float here, we have a float here. So we're missing two floats and three float pins. We're missing all four main jet holders. I don't particularly care about the jets themselves because we're gonna replace those in the rebuild kits. Same deal with the needle and seat. Those are all gonna be replaced anyway. No damage or anything either. I'm looking for that as well. So that all seems to be fine. We have no hardware. So we're gonna need all 16 uh, screws for the bowls and then eight screws for the top caps. And I think that is it. So I am going off of memory, but I can't think of any other components that should be here that are not. So let me go up in my uh, attic into my uh, kind of carburetor spare parts. Let's see if we can find all this stuff. So up here in my storage, I have uh, quite a few extra sets of carburetors. Anytime I get a set that are like too far damaged to repair, uh, I keep them for exact moments like this. So this is a set that somebody sent in that I think was from a 350. 50 is a CB350F, uh, which is the exact same carbs. And you can see that uh, with the amount of oxidation and stuff on these, they are just not salvageable, completely eaten away. But they do have enough usable parts for me to uh, salvage what we need. So I have a number one, number two uh, bowl here. I have a usable top cap, two floats, um, one, two. I'm actually going to need to steal the float pin out of this body right here. So that'll give us three float pins. I have enough of the little hardware in here as well, um, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that with uh, stainless uh, Allen cap screws because I like those a little bit better than the OE hardware. And also they'll be nice and shiny and brand new. This is one of those scenarios where being a parts hoarder comes in handy. It uh, looks like we had every uh, replacement part uh, in stock in our hoard. So I have all of the top caps, floats, float pins, the bowls. The only thing I'm concerned about with this replacement bowl is it does seem to have kind of a polished finish or the three that came with the carbs are pretty dull. I'm gonna have to see after I ultrasonic clean and then vapor blast all of these, how closely they match. If this one kind of sticks out like a sore thumb because it's too shiny, uh, we can throw it in the dry blasting cabinet, get rid of that finish, uh, and then vapor blast it again, and that should uh, have them pretty close. We'll have to see how that turns out here in a little bit. 
I have brand new uh, replacement stainless hardware, like I mentioned, M5 and M4 for the top caps and bowls, respectively. I don't think I've shown these on the channel before. Uh, I do a lot of these carburetor rebuilds, and these jet holders are often corroded or missing. So I got tired of trying to find OE ones, and what I did is basically had a whole bunch of these laser cut out of stainless. They show up to me flat like this. I just put them in, uh, you know, pliers or whatever, bend them all up to the right angles, and then I have nice high quality stainless uh, jet holders to replace them. So I'll show you guys that process uh, a little bit later on when we get there, but that's what I'm gonna use to uh, replace those. Now I need to get to disassembling everything and throw it all in the ultrasonic cleaner. I got all the pieces cleaned up. I ended up dry blasting uh, one of the bowls just so that they would have a very similar finish as I mentioned. So I think that those turned out great. So I'm moving on to making my little jet holders and I figured I would show you guys the process. It's pretty quick and easy. Um, so what I do is I just take a, uh, a flat one, grab it in certain spots where I wanna keep it flat and then I just bend it up by hand Kind of match the angle. The end of it is bent the other direction, and like that. Do the same thing on this side. And the whole purpose of these is just to hold the main jets in. So it's not like a super critical, you know, angle or anything like that. All we're looking for is that. These tabs are supposed to touch the bottom of the bowl. The jet slides into this little opening in the middle here and it just holds that jet from falling out with vibration. So this part, to get a tight enough bend, I just have to grab it and I use a little hammer. It's like that to get a nice tight bend. And then you can see how they can compare with a factory one. Easy as that, and then I have nice stainless replacements that will never corrode or you know have any issues. So I'll neck out the other two and then I think we're actually ready to start to reassemble. Here they are all completed. I did go ahead and do a bench sink, which is probably like 95% of the way there. It's plenty for a first start and getting the bike to idle and warm up and all that kind of stuff. But I always recommend to my customers do a proper vacuum sink on their bike just to uh, actually match up each carb with its respective cylinder. That's the best way to uh, get these classic Hondas running uh, the best they possibly can. I did go ahead and throw larger jets in this as well. Uh, because this customer is going to be running a free-flowing exhaust and pod filters. But I uh, threw the factory size jets in this little bag that I'll ship back to him uh, just in case he wants to kind of play around with it. But this should be pretty much good to go. I'm really happy with how uh, that extra bowl just blends right in. You eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed that I actually completely cleaned up and ultrasonic cleaned and everything a bowl. And I went to install it and realized that I, I must have grabbed the wrong one because I had three of one kind and one of the other. So I had to go back up in the attic and grab the correct one, but no big deal. Everything else cleaned up great. So I'm super happy. These are ready to uh, pack up and head back to the customer. 
So that's gonna do it for this one, guys. I know there wasn't a ton of information in this video, but I wanted to kind of turn the camera on and just show you what a normal day in the shop looks like for me. Uh, these kind of jobs allow me to keep the lights on. They allow me to have the time and the funds uh, to do the bigger projects. So I figured I might as well turn on the camera and show you guys what I was working on. I appreciate you watching as always. If you are interested in more of a how-to on rebuilding these style carburetors, I do have a very detailed video. I'll throw a link in the description below if that's something you're into. I appreciate you guys watching as always, and I'll see you on the next one.